Great morning, great morning, TEC and family, TEC and friends. Hey, why don't y'all just come on in the room? Come on in the room. Listen, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is a special day. I don't, I don't even need to tell you, you already know. Today is the most special day to me of the year. Today is Mother's Day. Hey, we have some special things for you this morning, this Mother's Day Sunday. Uh, in fact, the first mother that logged on this morning that come into the comment, that makes a comment, we have a gift for you. Listen, we're going to be giving out gifts this morning. We're going to give out probably five or six gifts. So you want to participate this morning. You want to comment. There are going to be a few questions this morning, and if you comment the right answer, uh, we are going to put a gift in your hand. All of our gifts that we are going to give out this morning are at least worth $50 or more. $50 or more. So the first mother who put her name in the comment, say Happy Mother's Day. You're going to get the first gift. All righty, I am so excited about this morning. There's going to be worship, there's going to be praise, there's going to be prayer, there's going to be the Word of God. In fact, there is going to be a testimony this morning, so you don't want to leave. Go ahead and tell someone right now, come on over to the Equipping Center page. It's exciting this morning. You will not regret it. Let me say a quick prayer for you, and then we are going into worship. So Father, we just thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all of our family. We thank you for the fathers, the mothers, the children, Lord, our friends, our partners. We thank you for every person that has eyes to see and ears to hear. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say this morning. I do believe, Lord, that you have an encouraging word this morning for your people. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. All right, let's go into worship.
more time, y'all. No more. No more shackles. No more chains. No more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Oh. 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 We thank you for freedom. the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way you made i 
so grateful we're so grateful come on take a minute before we go further come on just worship the Lord right there come on raise your come on raise your worship worship team come on let's raise your worship Just talk to him, just talk to him, just talk to him. We're so grateful, Lord. We're so grateful, Lord. We're so grateful. So grateful.
Hallelujah. I just want to go ahead and just take a second to thank the worship team for taking us in this morning. Amen. You know, the worship, it gets our hearts right. It gets the soul right uh, for the Word of God. Uh, before we go into the Word of God this morning, we want to go ahead and um, just honor the Lord with our giving. Honor the Lord with our tithes and offering. Uh, this morning, I'm going to read out of uh, Malachi chapter 3. And I'm only going to read, I think, verse number 10, I believe. You know, we can read from 8 all the way down as it relates to tithes and offering. Of those of you that have uh, been faithfully paying your tithes, I, I especially want to say thank you to you. You make what we do happen. You make it possible for us to be, even in the studio uh, this morning, bringing the Word of God. If it wasn't from those of you that have been consistently given and tithing, um, we would not have had church the last two years. You tithe, this, has, this has been our church building on Sunday morning in this studio. So I want you to go to Malachi chapter 3. Those of you that have your word out this morning, we're going to read verse number 10 to you. It says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. The Lord is talking about tithing. This is what he's saying. He said, try me. Try me, capital M, me. Try me when? Try me now and see if I, our God, will not open for you the windows of heaven. Man, I tell you, I would love for that to happen uh, this morning, that God would just open up his window, just begin to blow blessings throughout um, this service this morning. The windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing for you that you will not have room enough to receive it. I want you to just imagine just telling God, I can't take no more. God, you've blessed me so well, I can't take any more. You've given me so much, God, don't give me another thing. I don't need another car, another house. I don't need another penny. Yes, but God says, try me in this. Try me in tithing. Try me now and see if I will not open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing such a blessing that you cannot receive it. So again, I want to thank those of you that have been just partners with us, those of you that have been members of the Equipment Center, those of you that have locked arms with us and believe in God for all that we have been praying for, that you have been praying for, for your individual family. There's so much more we can talk about when we talk about the tithe. But one last thing I'll say to you, the tithe, it rebukes the devourer. It rebukes Satan off of your finances, off of your family, off of your health. So let's continue to believe God in giving. Continue to believe God in the principles of giving, the principle of tithing and giving. All righty, we're going to go into the Word in a second here. I'll be right back.
Hey, family. Thank you so much for giving to the work of the Lord here at the Equipping Center. And now it's our time to give to you. So in the chat, in the post, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, one thing I'd like for everybody to do, put up a post of your mom. Put a photo of your mom or your grandma. Um, and put something that you loved about her or love about her. We're going to honor all mamas, all grandmamas. And we have some giveaways today. So if you are a mama, um, I want you to put up your children's names and the one with names and ages. And the one with the most children will get a gift card. And the one with the youngest child will also get a gift card. And then I would like whoever would to post just a sweet tribute to your mom. You can put it with the photo and we will choose from those for um, another gift card. So that's three opportunities for gift cards. I'm excited to celebrate mamas. I am a mama. I am so excited. We have moms, we have spiritual moms. We celebrate you as well. If you wanna post your spiritual mom, go ahead and do that because God gave us spiritual moms as well. Motherhood comes in so many forms and I salute each and every one of you. I celebrate you. This is a day to rejoice and be glad. You know, I was uh, memorizing some scriptures this week and one that I was, I've been working on is, it says, the Lord is our strength and our shield. My heart cried, my heart trusted in him and I was helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices and with my song, I will praise him. Is that not beautiful? So with my song, I praise God for mamas. I praise God for all that he has given us in the nurturing and loving uh, women that are in our lives. And we celebrate you. So remember, post photos, put up tributes, write your children in with their ages, and we'll celebrate the one with the most children with a gift card and the one with the youngest baby with a gift card. We celebrate you, we honor you, and we thank you. And now, get ready to hear about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living with a testimony that is sure to inspire you. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Great morning, TEC family and world. I am Rokisha, and I come to you on this morning to tell you happy Mother's Day. Happy, happy, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. If you have played a mother role in anyone's life, whether it's a mentor, godparents, nieces, nephews, happy Mother's Day to you. May your day be full of warm hugs and kisses from those that love you today, every day. Well, I am beyond ecstatic on this morning. My 17-year-old just got accepted into medical school. Come this August, she will be off to start her journey as a doctor. I am beyond proud of her and the time that we have put in to get her here. And it's not, it hasn't always been easy, but my guy is extremely faithful. Faithful, faithful he is. Even on my most trying days, he is faithful. Come August, she will be off to start her journey as a doctor, and I am still pinching myself because I am beyond proud of her and where this journey that she and I have been on to get her here. Just God and myself being a single mother of her for these last 17 years, and then along came four others. It has not been easy, no, not at all, but God is faithful, 100% faithful. Even on my most trying, difficult days, he is faithful, and he sustains us. Even on my days as a single mother, and I'm like, God, what the world? I'm being pulled left and right, mommy, 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 being pulled here and there all over the place. And I'm like, Lord, I am tired. 
then I know it's time for me to go to my quiet place within, to sit and commune with him and allow him to fill me up, to fill me up with his peace, his strength, his wisdom, and his help. Remembering and standing on Luke 145, blessed is she who believes God will fulfill the promises made to her. Waking up early in the morning while the house is quiet before everyone wakes up, speaking the word aloud over myself and over my babies, praying in the spirit while I'm making my coffee. Lord, I thank you that we are blessed in our comings on today, that we're blessed on in our goings. Lord, I thank you that Micaiah, Mikhail, Kamari, Josiah, and Ariel rise in wisdom and in stature and have favor with God and man on today. God, I speak the prayer of Jabez over Micaiah, Mikhail, Kamari, and Josiah over on today. I thank you, Lord, that you will bless them indeed and that you will enlarge their territory, enlarge the territory in their minds today, Lord. I thank you that this entire house, God, on this day, that they, our minds are at perfect peace, God. God, continue to remind them what you say about them and that what you say about them is all that matters. Remind them, Lord, who they are in you, and they stand firmly on that as they go throughout their day on today. I stand on his word. I believe his promises, and his promises for my children and our children are yes and amen that the fruitful seeds of the kingdom that were planted in them when I rededicated all of their lives back to Christ that those seeds are water and are still being watered throughout the years to come with much prayer, meditation, and worship. They shall rise and one day call their mother blessed. And also keeping myself grounded and surrounded by like-minded individuals who still believe in me, who refuse to give up on the calling of my life, who can speak life back into me on those trying, difficult days being open and honest with my pastors and my spiritual parents when I'm having a beat up day, what I call a beat up day. I'm telling you, God is so faithful to us mothers, faithful. And although us mothers don't always get it right, 365, 24 seven, and even just to be honest, get frustrated at times, no matter the age, a mother's love for her babies is incomparable and so rewarding because the blessings of the Lord maketh one rich and adds no sorrow. Happy, happy Mother's Day. I pray that that has encouraged you on today. I decree and I declare much peace on today. Warm hugs. Go and enjoy your day. It is your day. Enjoy your beautiful Sunday. Amen, amen, amen. Such a great time today. I hope you are commenting today. I hope you're just grabbing up these gifts that these gifts and prizes that uh, we're giving out this morning. But how many of you know we are celebrating this morning? We're celebrating our mothers. You know, there's many types of mothers, and I want to tell you, we are celebrating each and every one of you. That's a, the house mother. The spiritual mom, the, the mothers who are raising somebody else's children, the mothers who are raising up your own children, the mother that is that single. There are just so many types of mothers. If you are a mama, we are celebrating you today. Hey, there's one other mother that we often don't talk about, but there are the single parent fathers who are having to be mothers at times, so we celebrate you today as well. I know for you, like many of you, um, I am especially missing my mom today. My mother passed away in 2016. Those of you that, that you're spending your first Mother's Day without your mom, or second or third, or uh, 20th, it never get easier. So I want to say to those of you that still have your mother alive, find your mother. I don't care uh, what's going on with y'all, you disagree about this or that. Love your mother as hard as you can love her, as much as you can love her. And so after this service this morning, I'll be going to the cemetery. Many of you don't know what that feel like, and I hope you never uh, learn what it feels like anytime soon. But I'll be going to the cemetery to visit my mom's grave, you know, to have a little bit of time there at her grave. Although we don't teach that people are in graves, we teach that they are in heaven, their spirit is no longer here on earth. 
but I'm going the last place that we left her. Amen. I want you to get ready to jump into scripture this morning. I am going to uh, I'm going to hit scripture kind of fast because um, we still have a few more things that we want to do. Uh, a couple of things we're going to do as the message in today. So don't go anywhere. I want you to go to Psalm chapter 139. Psalm chapter 139, and I want you to wait for me right there. All right? I don't know about you, man, uh, sister, woman, brother, son's daughter. I don't know about you, but, man, I tell you, I grew up. I, when I look back, when I look back over my life, I was a mama's boy. Yeah, don't laugh at me, because many of you, you are mama's boys, too. Uh, you daddy's girls. I was a mama's boy. I mean, named after my dad, looked like my dad, patterned my life after my dad, sit like him. Uh, just so much. Everything about me is like my dad, man. But I tell you, I was a mama's boy. I followed my mom around that house. I followed her in the kitchen, uh, man, uh, all the way up till she gave her last breath. Uh, man, we were tight. We were so close. And, man, I, I miss I miss her so much. And so, again, honor your mother and father while you have them. Amen. All right, all righty. What did I tell you? Go to Psalms, Psalm chapter 139. <clears throat> it says, for you formed my inward parts. I'm talking to God, you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul, my soul knows it well, very well. In my mother's womb, he formed me. He knitted me together just like you and I. None of us would be here today if it wasn't from a mother, if it wasn't from our mama. God used our mama to bring us here to earth. You know, sometimes I don't care what, what your relationship is uh, with your mom. I tell you, it is going to be harder for you. Listen, young people, it's going to be harder for you to love your mom more than she loves you. I have witnessed this over the years. You know, I do prison ministry uh, as often as I can. I tell you. I go to those prisons sometime and I see, I see standing in that at that gate waiting to get in to see, to see her baby. I see those moms. See a few dads, but I tell you, I see quite a few moms standing at that gate, waiting to get to that gate to see her boy. It doesn't matter what he's in there for. It doesn't matter what the crime was. He is still her boy. I tell you, a mom believes in her child more than that child believes in him or herself. That mom, that mom, I don't, no one can tell, no one can tell her anything wrong with you, about you. You know, I see it often um, at schools. I've seen it, I've witnessed it myself, where when a mother get called to a school about her child, that teacher can tell that mother no wrong about her child. They literally can show that mom in video, on video, Johnny just showing out, just tearing up the class, and mom will still say, not my child. A mother's going to believe in her child. Did I tell you go to Psalm 139? So I want you to go to Luke, Luke chapter 126. Luke chapter 1, what is 126? Luke chapter 1, verse 26. It says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice! Highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. This is, this is Mary. Mary was engaged. She was engaged to be married. And then the Bible says God picked her. God chose her. What did he pick her to do? What did he choose her to do? 
to bring to earth a savior, your savior, my savior, a deliverer. He chose, he could have chose anybody. But see, let me tell you, God does things in a way that man can never take credit for it. When God does stuff, you know only God could have done what he did. The fact that you're sitting here this morning in your right mind tells you that there is a God. When you can think about where he brought you from, all that he got you through, you know that there is a God. God is a miracle forming God. One of the greatest miracles that he ever formed was through a woman, a virgin, called Mary. God sent, God sent the angel Gabriel to her, and then Gabriel was the one that gave her the word. Hey Amen. Verse number 29. Verse number 29. It says, but when she saw him, she was troubled at, at his saying, and consider what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. You know, someone right now, you just need to call on the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Demons flee when they hear the name of Jesus. Right now, you just need to build your faith in God. Just go ahead and just say it. Just say, just say, Jesus, you've got some stuff, just stuff bottled up inside of you, and you need a release. Go ahead and just call this name. Say his name softly. When you say the name of Jesus, Jesus, talk back to you. Hallelujah. Verse 32 it says, and he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Now, that's why we serve God. That's why we, that's why we serve Jesus Christ. We, we have given our lives to Jesus Christ because in his kingdom, there will be no end. You know, there's going to be an end for a lot of people. But in his kingdom, if you're in the kingdom of God, there will be no end. Verse 34, then Mary said to the angel, she says, how can this be since I do not know a man? You know what I mean? You know what she meant when she said, I do not know a man. I have not been with a man. How can this Miracle, basically, it's an, an impossible miracle. Let me tell you, you need to be reminded that there is nothing impossible with God. Now, someone need to be reminded of that this morning. There is nothing impossible with God. And the angel answered her in verse 35 and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Hallelujah. Therefore, also that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. In her old age. It doesn't matter your age. If God has called you, if God has called you to anything, God is able to do it even in your old age. He is able to do it through you, to you, with you, even in your old age. If there are promises that God has made to you that are unfulfilled, that haven't happened yet, remind him about Elizabeth. Remind him about Sarah and Abraham. Yes, God is not through with you yet. Amen. I just need to encourage someone right now. I need to encourage you, you've let your age bother you. You've been down because of your age. In fact, you're thinking that God can't use you anymore. You're thinking that I can't even go and get a job. I'm too old. No one wants to be around me. Let me prophesy. Let me tell you this. God is not through with you yet. I want you to live. I want you to smile. I want you to, I want to get dressed. I want you to go ahead and pursue 
the purpose in your life, the unfulfilled purpose in your life. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 37. It says, for with God, nothing is impossible. Say this, with God. Now, you can do a lot on your own. You can try a lot on your own. But with God, nothing is impossible. What does nothing mean? Yes, it means what it says. Nothing will be impossible with God. Let no one tell you what you can't do. The scripture says nothing will be impossible with God. All things are possible with God. I'll just give you several ways to say that. It says in verse 38, then, 38, then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to the word. And the angel departed from her according to the word. All you need is a word from God. That's why we've been talking the last few weeks about, about hearing from God. I've been talking for, for years about uh, how, how important it is to, to receive the Holy Ghost, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I've been telling you that. I've been teaching that for years. You need, you need that direct line with God. Amen. The Holy Ghost will teach you all things. He will comfort. He will speak. Are oh, you hear me this morning? Hallelujah. John chapter 2. John chapter 2, verse 1. John chapter 2, verse 1. I'm coming to that in a second. John chapter 2. Verse 1, I, I'm just thinking about uh, single mamas. I'm thinking about you right now. Single mamas. I, I've heard my mother for years encourage single mamas. There are many of you that are single because maybe you went through a divorce. But the single mom, the single mom that, that gave birth to a child or children out of wedlock, I'm not encouraging that, but, but I, I remember so, so many times hearing my mother uh, say to, to young women who were pregnant, who were thinking about um, aborting the child, but, but going through with uh, giving birth to that child, she would say to those young women, it takes a woman to give birth to the child. In fact, she says, you're more than a woman to give birth to a child. It's easier to give, uh, have an abortion, but it takes a woman to have that child, to nurture that child, and to raise that child. So, so I want to encourage you, be the best mom that you can be. Be the best mother that you can be. Children, I tell you, children have such a, a special bond with their mother a special bond with their mother, one unlike any other kind. In fact, I was telling you earlier uh, about men in prison, seeing these mothers just line up to get inside the prisons to see their boys. I remember on one occasion, one occasion I was in the prison on business with leadership, leadership Greenville, and, um, and we were meeting with inmates. We were touring the prison, and we was going into the cells, and we was just seeing how the inmates live daily. And, and I remember right before we left, they gathered about 20 men, we sat in a circle, and let the man begin to ask us questions, and we tried to encourage them and answer questions. And I remember this one man, let me, let me tell you this, those that have been in prison, I've never, pray I never will, but I've heard that uh, you do not want to show tears in prison if you are serving time. In prison. You don't want to cry if you're in prison. I don't know how true that is, but, but I remember being in this circle, and all of a sudden, one of the men in that circle uh, began, to, began to weep, began to cry, because he began to think about his mother. And I remember, I remember this guy saying, man, I miss my mom. And then it went around the circle where several men in that circle began to say, I sure miss my mama. And there was tears in that circle. Well, Mr. Man, I want my mama. And all of a sudden, these 
grown men, some that committed murder, I mean, all kinds of stuff, some of the men in there for life, some of their mothers have been dead 20 years, all of a sudden they all disturbed and said, I really miss my mom. Now, as I was riding home from that prison, it dawned on me that not one of those men said, I miss my dad. I sure wish my daddy was here. I really wish my, each and every one of those men, it wasn't Mother's Day, it was just a normal day. Man, I miss my mom. And so, Mom, you play an important role in your child's life. You're the first person to hold that child. You're the, you're the one that shapes his head, his or her head, so that they don't have a peanut head like mine. Uh, you are the one that nurtures and builds that child, encourages that child. When everyone has turned their back on that child, you're there for that child. And so we honor you today because, Mom, you truly, you truly matter. Mom, you truly, you truly make a difference. Yes, John chapter 2, it says, or verse 1, it says, On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. What would it like be like being the mother of Jesus? It says in verse 2, But now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not come yet. Now, let me, let, me just, let me just talk about this for a second. I can, I can just imagine, you, Jesus said, my time has not come yet. But Mary, Mary knew about Jesus. She knew that his day would come. She, she has known from the moment the angel spoke to her before Jesus ever came to the earth that he would be great and he would do great things. She had knew that he would perform miracles and she was waiting on that moment. Here this moment comes. We're at the wedding. They run out of wine. And, you know, I could just think everybody was disappointed except for Mary. Mary's thinking, boy, it is time now for everyone to meet my son. They're going to see what my son can do. And Mary knew that Jesus would turn this water into wine. It was Jesus' mother that spoke to him to turn that water into wine. She was a proud mother at that moment. You know, my proudest, one of the proudest moments in my mother's life was the day that I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I tell, I've told many people, not just men, but I've told many people over the years that one of the best gifts that you can give your mother while she is alive is to give your life to Jesus Christ. We have someone this morning, you're watching this morning, and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let me tell you, number one, do it for yourself. What I mean by do it for yourself Accept Jesus Christ in your life for yourself. But just know this, that that is one of the greatest things you can do to make your mother happy is to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Surrender your life to the Lord. You say, why? Because she has been praying for you before you ever came to earth. She has cried over you. Have she had went to sleep many nights in a pillow full of tears over you. She's worried about you. She's prayed for you. I'm telling you, she's, she's carrying your name to church on Sunday morning. She's talking to the intercessors about you. We get phone calls all of the time where people are calling our home, calling Pastor Deanna, saying, pray for my child. My child was in an accident. Pray for my child. My child went to jail. Pastor Hassan, will you go and visit my child? He's in the jail. He's, he's in prison. Will you go and talk to him? We get calls all of the time from mothers, mothers who are worried and they are praying for their child. 
I want you to consider today, I want you to consider today, I know you've probably bought her a card and you're going you're gonna to slide her some money. You got flowers for her. Yeah, give me my flowers while I'm alive. Give her her flowers. Yes, while she's alive. But I want you to consider today that, man, the greatest gift that I could really give my mom is to let her know that she don't have to worry about me anymore. Let her know that I'm getting my life together. Let her know that I'm, I'm making the change, and the change it starts today on Mother's Day. I'm giving my heart, I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ. I want you to consider that. You're going to have an opportunity in a few minutes. In about 15 minutes, you're going to have an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. I will not end without praying with you today. Uh, in fact, just wait on me. Wait on me. Yeah, if he's not in the room, Mom, go and get him. If she's not in the room, go and get your child, go and get your children and bring them into the room because uh, something special is going to happen today. They are going to have an opportunity to come into the kingdom right at the end of this teaching today. I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. And we're going to start in verse number 10. Proverbs chapter 31, verse number 10. This is for the husbands who have a good woman. Yeah, you got a good woman, man. You better make sure you give her her flowers today. You got a good woman. I don't care if she, if she tell you, Oh, you don't have to get me anything. You better get her something today. You better get her a card. You better write her a letter. You, you better massage them toes of her. I'm just kidding with you now. Proverbs 31, uh, some of the women probably say, yeah, I want my toes massaged. Yeah, I want my feet, feet massaged. Verse 10, it says, who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. Man, I, I got to say it again. If you've got a good woman, man, you better appreciate her today. Verse 11 says, The heart of a husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. Man, you know, as I read this, it, it describes, it describes the mothers that, that, from my generation as a child, the mothers that raised their children. I know we live in a different time now where things are different, but I want to tell you, boy, in my day and time, my mother, she worked a job. She took care of six children. She kept the house clean. She made sure that we had three meals a day. Her mother didn't have, she didn't complete her education. In fact, she, she uh, did not have much of an education at all, but she had a business, not just a business. She had businesses. And, and man, in this, reading this, uh, wow, it, it describes my mom. Verse 14, it says, she is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. She considers a field and buys it from her profit. She plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. And this is some kind of woman. Hallelujah. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand hold the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. <sighs> this is a woman. She not only, not only did she take care of her family, she made her husband look good. She, she worked. She had a business. I, I'm telling you, she even had a ministry, a ministry where she where she extended her hand to the poor. I, I, I keep telling you about my mother, and I hope as I talk about my mother, I'm talking about your mother. 
I hope, I hope the things that I'm saying, you, you're thinking, that was my mom too. But I remember one of the ministries, one of the ministries that my mother had was a ministry to inmates in prisons. But she started this, this, this uh, pen pal ministry writing inmates' letters. And she got the church behind it. And there were inmates. I mean, there were letters coming to our house every week from the prisons. And mom would do her best to write each, each prisoner back. And then she had friends and partners. And I think part of the church, they all joined in and was writing letters to the inmates. She made sure that at Christmas, at Thanksgiving, that she carried food into the prison and that the inmates were able to have a really good hot meal at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Those were just part of our ministries. And there was others that, I'm, I'm telling you, there was my one ministry that she had where if a person in our community passed away and they didn't have insurance, my mother would just go from door to door in that community collecting money to make sure that that person had a proper barrier. That's just some of the things about her, man. I'm telling you, this mother right here in Proverbs 31, this woman right here, she exemplifies what it is to be a, 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 a woman of God. Uh, yeah, a, a woman with many hats. Verse 21, it says, she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all of her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry with her for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. I tell you, I got to stop on every one of these verses, but I am not. I'm going to finish. Every one of these verses, they describe a special woman in my life. It wasn't my mother or my wife, Pastor Deanna. She, she fits many of the verses in, in the scripture of women in my family that fit many of the verses in the scripture. There are women that are part of this church that fit many of the verses in these scriptures. Verse number 23, I love this verse. It says, her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sell them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. Mm. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children, hallelujah, her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. First Corinthians chapter 13 is where we're going to land because it defines, it describes a mother in so many ways because a mother is so full of love. I, I really haven't met a mother that have not been full of love with their children, for her children. In fact, that was one of the ways that we were able to um, get hundreds and hundreds of children on buses over the years to take them to a church that they didn't even know who the pastor was. We would go to those doors and we would knock on those doors and we would say, do you have children? That got that mother's attention. We want to take them to church. And we would come back and we would tell them how special that child was. And I want to tell you, when you begin to tell a mother how special her child is, you gain favor with that mother. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 7 is where we're landing. It says, love is patient. There's no other person that have the patience for a child 
like that child's mother. Oh, sometimes there are children around, sometime around me, sometime, and you, they're just, they're just bad. Let me just say that they are bad. You know, they are acting bad. Can I put it that way? And sometimes I want to take my belt off and whoop them. But I look at that mom over there, and she think that little bad child is cute. What that child is doing is cute. And I understand that is a mother's love for a child because what you think is cute right now, I want to take this belt off on that child. So I said, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong, no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always, say always, it always protects. It always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Mm. Verse 13, it says, and now these three remain faith, hope, in love, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. I have faith in my child. I hope the best for my child, and I love my child like no other. That is the heart of every mama. I said I will give you a chance to give your life to God today. I hope that you have your child in the room right now. And I'm looking in the camera this morning, and I'm going to speak to some child this morning. And that child may be 25 years old. That child may be 35, 45 years old. The thing about it, when you are someone's child, it doesn't matter how old you are, you are still their child. You are still their baby. 40 years old, and maybe that mom had been praying for you for 17 years. She's praying for you to come off those drugs, praying for you to come out of those streets, praying for you to get your life together. I want to tell you this morning, there is nothing impossible with God. When you are in God, there's nothing impossible. Speaking to the perfect this morning, that you're thinking, I'll get it together with God when I come out of these streets. I'll get it together with God when I quit drinking and quit smoking and quit getting high. No, today is the day of salvation for you. And so I'm about to pray right now. The greatest gift that you can give your mother, you can do it right now simply by repeating the prayer that I am about to pray. If you want to give your mother this gift today, a spiritual gift, while she is alive, let her see her son, her daughter, her grandchildren come into the kingdom of God. Say this prayer with me. All right, let's pray. Dear God, I come to you on my own. I come to you with an open heart. Today, I invite you in. I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins. Wash them away. Save me. I believe that Jesus Christ died for me and forgave me so that I can be saved and live for you and serve you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer today, you are saved. And I'm going to say one last prayer for you, and then uh, we're going to bring this service to an end. Father, I pray for each and every person this morning that had ears to hear what the Spirit would say that each and every person would allow the Spirit of the Lord to, to just search them, to search their heart. The person that says, I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better man. 
I want to be a better child to my parents. I pray this morning that the spirit of the Lord would arrest, that the spirit of the Lord would do spiritual surgery. Lord, I pray, Lord, whatever habits need to be broken this morning, that the spirit of the Lord, the blood of Jesus, break that habit right now. Break every habit, every habit. I won't name the habits that I'm seeing right now, but I know that the power of the blood is able, the power of the Holy Ghost, that same power that brought Jesus to earth, that same power is able to break crack addiction, that same power is able to break lies, people that tell lies, that same power is able to break sex addiction, that same power is able to break any type of habit, any type of habit that could be formed. No weapons formed against the listeners this morning is able to prosper, can prosper, will prosper. It is broken right now. It is broken right now. It is broken right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Until next time, you know the saying, go be great.